Good evening aspirants. Welcome to the Hindi News Analysis by Shankar IAS Academy for the date 7th August 2019. These are the list of articles which has been chosen for today's analysis and it has been provided along with the page numbers of Chennai, Bengaluru, Delhi and Tirunandapuram editions. The link for the handwritten notes is provided in the description box below and it is also provided in the comment section. Let's move on to our first article discussion. These two articles are a response article to the recent developments that were carried out and proposed for the state of Jammu and Kashmir. The proposed measures were discussed elaborately yesterday with respect to Rajya Sabha. Today's discussion will contain the developments after the approval in Lok Sabha and other issues. This open editorial article has been authored by the writer of the book Across the Line of Control. Inside Pakistan administered Jammu and Kashmir. The syllabus relevant for the analysis for this news article has been highlighted here for your reference. The author of this open editorial article mentions that India cannot claim the moral point that it has kept the territorial integrity of Jammu and Kashmir intact. The author is saying this because once the state of Jammu and Kashmir loses the status of a state and once it is divided territorially then the integrity will be lost and after the division India cannot claim that it has kept the integrity of the state without any change. The author calls for an analysis of immediate implications of the constitutional changes which were made and proposed to the state of Jammu and Kashmir. He says that part of the reasons for these changes may be partially true. The remaining assertions of facts are contrary to the facts that is the assertions made are not true. We know that on August 5, 2019 the Union Minister of Home Affairs has introduced two bills and two resolutions in the Rajya Sabha. One bill is for the reorganization of the state of Jammu and Kashmir into two union territories. This bill is called as Jammu and Kashmir Reorganization Bill of 2019. This was passed in the Lok Sabha yesterday. The Union Home Minister has said that after the bifurcation, if the situation improves, then the Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir will be given the status of a state again at the right time. The Minister has also informed that the decision of the government regarding this matter will not affect the Indian government's claim on the Pakistan occupied Kashmir. Then the other bill introduced in the Rajya Sabha on August 5 is to amend the Jammu and Kashmir Reservation Act of 2004. This bill is called as the Jammu and Kashmir Reservation Second Amendment Bill of 2019. This bill was aimed at amending the Jammu and Kashmir Reservation Act. But uh, this reservation bill has been withdrawn by the Home Minister from both the Houses of Parliament. This was withdrawn because once the article 370 is made inoperative, then the reservation system will normally apply to Jammu and Kashmir as required by the Indian constitution. Then one of the resolutions uh, is to request the president to stop the operation of article 370 by issuing a public notification according to article 370 clause 3 of Indian constitution. This resolution was also approved in Lok Sabha yesterday. After the approval, the Ministry of uh, Law and Justice has notified the declaration or the public notification of the President in the Government Gazette. The notification states that the President on the recommendation of Parliament is pleased to declare that as from the 6th August 2019, all clauses of the Article 370 shall cease to be operative. So, from now on all provisions of the Indian constitution as amended from time to time without any modifications or exceptions shall apply to the state of Jammu and Kashmir also like other states and union territories. Earlier the government has said that since president's rule is in force in the state implementation of article 370 would cease to exist when president of India issues the public notification. Then the next one among the resolutions is the constitution application to Jammu and Kashmir order of 2019 which was issued by the president of India to supersede the 1954 constitutional order. Both the 1954 order and the 2019 order were issued by the president under article 370 clause 1 of the Indian constitution. 
though the president has already made this constitutional application to jammu and kashmir order of 2019 the press information bureau calls this order as a resolution this order has removed the special provisions given to jammu and kashmir by superseding article 35a of indian constitution this article 35a was inserted by the 1954 order and this 1954 order was issued based on article 370 clause 1 but as now article 370 has ceased to operate so based on this all special provisions also ceased to be operative now let us come to the news article yesterday we saw that the reason for the proposal to divide the state of jammu and kashmir into two union territories is to tackle the internal security situation that was uh, supported and fueled by cross border terrorism this reason is mentioned by the author as greater counter terrorism preparedness the author says that the division of jammu and kashmir will lead to greater counter terrorism preparedness is questionable the author adds that for the counter terrorism or counter insurgency strategy to work there has to be efficient and apt human intelligence coming from the ground his opinion is that just by changing the administrative and political setup the government is expecting that it will get more intelligence to the security forces according to this author this expectation is unrealistic not only this because of the unpopularity of the decision of the union government the people in the kashmir valley will not be cooperative to the security apparatus of india here the word uh, unpopularity means the central government's decision was not uh, liked by the people in the kashmir valley this means that there may be disaffection or dissatisfaction in the kashmir valley but whenever such dissatisfaction is there there is a possibility of exploitation of the scenario by pakistan for example the author mentions that in 1960s there was a maximum dilution of article 370 and this situation was used by pakistan by launching the operation gibraltar in august 1965 this operation gibraltar is the strategy of pakistan to infiltrate its soldiers or some people into the indian territory this is to create insurgency and then to add the jammu and kashmir territory to pakistan now this was to manipulate the public opinion of jammu and kashmir by infiltration that is if the existing public opinion is to join with india then pakistan wants to manipulate the public opinion to join with pakistan by infiltrating its soldiers this is how pakistan thinks it can win a plebiscite by increasing the population of jammu and kashmir by infiltration this is one of the reasons why pakistan calls for international mediation so that it can take advantage of the manipulated situation here plebiscite if conducted it will mean a process where people of uh, jammu and kashmir may vote whether they want the territory to be joined to india or to pakistan but since the demography of jammu and kashmir is altered by pakistan through infiltration it is unfair to conduct a plebiscite that is one of the reason why india says that there cannot be international mediation now let us see how pakistan altered the integrity of the disputed territory of pakistan occupied kashmir the gilgit baltistan region is in the northern part of pakistan occupied kashmir in the year 2009 pakistan created new offices of governor and chief minister in the northern areas of pakistan occupied kashmir it also changed the name of uh, northern areas into gilgit baltistan It is reported that the Pakistan has also established an upper house in the Gilgit Baltistan Council with the Prime Minister of Pakistan as its ex officio chairperson. By doing this in 2009 Pakistan has altered the integrity of the disputed territory. It has also let China for the infrastructural projects in the disputed region of the Pakistan occupied Kashmir. But till now India has not altered the integrity of the region. that pakistan calls as india occupied kashmir but the reorganization bill aims to bifurcate the state of jammu and kashmir into two union territories bifurcation means dividing into two so if bifurcation is done india cannot say that 
only Pakistan has crossed the line by altering the region and political setup of the disputed territory. Therefore, the author says that by bifurcating, India cannot claim the moral high ground any more that it has secured the integrity of the region of Jammu and Kashmir. Also, the author mentions that even after the bifurcation, there will be demands to further divide the state of Jammu and Kashmir. The author states that these demands have to be categorically rejected to ensure stability and to ensure the absence of turbulence. The author talks about a cycle of violence that started in 1987 when the election for the state legislative assembly of Jammu and Kashmir was rigged. This means the elections conducted in 1987 has been alleged as unfairly conducted elections where there were allegations of uh, illegal casting of votes and counting of votes. Reports also say that important leaders of the region were under house arrest before and during and even after the elections. The author notes that the successive elections are also conducted in an unfair manner in the state. This means that the people are having mistrust in the way the elections are conducted and also in the way the democratic rights of the citizens are respected. Even now, there is no elected representative in the State Legislative Assembly of Jammu and Kashmir as it was dissolved last year in November. This means that people have not been enjoying the electoral and democratic rights by having a free, fair and timely election. So, this was the primary cause of the violence. But the recent decision is to remove the status of a state and to reorganize Jammu and Kashmir into two union territories. This decision is to bring the state under the control of the center by declaring it as a union territory. The author calls this decision as a self-defeating strategy. One of the reasons why the author calls this uh, could be uh, self-defeating is because it is purely relying on militaristic tools rather than also including confidence building measures. With respect to the proposal of Ladakh as a union territory, the demand to declare Ladakh as a union territory has been there since 1990s. But the demand was limited to lay district only. In Kargil, the Shia Islamic population has opposed such demand because of the fear of Buddhist domination in the region. But the reorganization bill says that the union territory of Ladakh will have the districts of lay and Kargil districts. Therefore, the government has to assure the Islamic population in the Kargil that their interests would be protected in the proposed new union territory of Ladakh. If not in the new union territory, Kargil may become a zone of disaffection. This zone can be used by Pakistan to test its luck. The author indirectly implies that this should not happen. Then the author asks the government to take steps to prevent polarization within the state on regional and religious lines because of the constitutional changes that are made and that were proposed. The claims made by the government regarding political reservation and development of the people belonging to the scheduled tribes is true. No credible steps have been taken in the state legislative assembly to provide the political reservation to the people belonging to the scheduled tribes as demanded by the Indian constitution. The proposed constitutional changes will therefore enable Indian constitution to apply to the region and it will ensure the political participation of the people belonging to the scheduled tribes. This will make the state political structure more inclusive. The article mentions that the most of the people belonging to the scheduled tribes are in the tribes of Gujars and Bakarwals. But what about the claims that were made regarding poverty? The author says that the Home Minister claims that the widespread poverty in the state as one of the reasons for the recent developments made to the state. The author mentions that only 10.35 percentage of the state's population lives below the poverty line. But the national average is around 21 percent. Therefore, this information is presented by the author as one of the new facts on Kashmir. These new facts contradict the facts that were made by the union home minister. That is why the article is titled as the new facts on the ground for Kashmir. Then one of the reasons mentioned for the removal of the special provisions is that 
those who are not permanent residents of the state cannot purchase land in Jammu and Kashmir. This means that there was a restriction on the land sale. But the author says that the successive state governments in the state have liberally given lands to non-state investors for lease on 99 years. This land lease is a new fact that has to be noted other than the reason about the land sale restriction that is widely reported in the sources of media. Some impediments have been removed by the recent constitutional changes now that any outsider can buy a land in the state of Jammu and Kashmir. This will lead to increased private investments only in the Jammu region. But for well distributed growth and development in the overall region of Jammu and Kashmir, a long period of peace is required. Because of the change in the special status for Jammu and Kashmir, the children born to women who marry the citizens from outside Jammu and Kashmir can now inherit the property of the mother. Then the refugees as most of them are persons belonging to the scheduled castes have migrated from Sialkot to Jammu and Kashmir after partition. They will now be able to get citizenship, employment and they can buy and own land and they can now vote in the proposed union territory. The author finally mentions about the return of Kashmiri Pandits. On January 19 uh, in the year 1990, it is reported that the Hindus living in the Kashmir Valley were asked to either leave the valley or to convert to Islam or die. Many Hindus from the Kashmir Valley have left their homes and other immovable properties. They have been waiting for a long time to return to their homes and land in the Kashmir Valley. This is expected to happen with the proposed changes to the state. But the author is saying that even now the security environment is not conducive for the return of the Kashmiri Hindus who were made to leave their homes. The author concludes that the country has to be better informed about the possible implications that may happen because of the recent developments. He asks the policy makers to arrive closer to the true and the unknown facts about the Jammu and Kashmir and he also asks them to learn from the past to avoid unrealistic expectations. With this we come to the end of this article discussion. The practice question displayed here will be discussed in the last session. Moving on to the next article discussion which is about the comment of China on India's Kashmir move and the role of Afghanistan in Kashmir. The syllabus that can be linked to today's discussion is given here for your reference. The Jammu and Kashmir Reorganization Bill of 2019 has been passed in both the Houses of Parliament. So we can say that the decision of the central government to end special status to Jammu and Kashmir under Article 370 and under Article 35A and also to make Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh as two union territories has also been endorsed or passed. We have already discussed the domestic reasons for this move. Now let us look at the international impacts of this move. In this discussion, we will be focusing on three countries in our neighborhood, namely China, Afghanistan and Pakistan. Following this move of the Indian government, the Chinese foreign ministry has said that the change of status of Ladakh was unacceptable to China. It also criticized the Indian move to end special status for Kashmir. So the Indian Ministry of External Affairs has strongly reacted to this statement. It said that the Jammu and Kashmir Reorganization Bill of 2019 is an internal affair of India. It also said that India does not comment on the internal affairs of other countries. So India expects other countries not to comment on its internal developments. Now China has uh, criticized so because India and China has a historic dispute over their boundary especially in Jammu and Kashmir. Actually India and China has territorial disputes over Jammu and Kashmir, Sikkim and Arunachal Pradesh. But let us confine today's analysis to Jammu and Kashmir only. In Jammu and Kashmir uh, the dispute is over the Aksai Chin and uh, Sakshwam Valley. Now here Aksai Chin is an uninhabited territory that is it is a place without inhabitants. Aksai Chin was an integral part of Jammu and Kashmir so it was an integral part of India. 
But after the 1962 Indochina War, it is occupied and administered by China. But India still claims that oxide chain is an integral part of lay in India. Also, now it comes under the newly proposed Union Territory of Ladakh. So, for India, Aksai chain is an Indian territory and for China, it is a Chinese territory. So, now let us know about Sakshgam Valley. Sakshgam Valley is also known as trans Karakoram Tract. We know that the end result of India-Pakistan War of 1947 was the Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. This Sakshgam Valley was a part of Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. But in the 1963 agreement between China and Pakistan, Pakistan ceded or surrendered the Sakshgam Valley to China, as you can see in this picture. So, now Sakshgam Valley is under Chinese control, but the territory is claimed by Indian government. It is still not clear yet whether uh, Sakshgam Valley and Aksai Chin will be included in the newly proposed Union territories of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh or not. Now let us discuss the impact of geopolitical events in Afghanistan and Pakistan on Jammu and Kashmir. The US had deployed their troops to fight the Taliban in Afghanistan, but it was not successful. So now USA is planning to withdraw their troops from Afghanistan as soon as possible. With this objective, the US special representative has been mediating between the Afghan government on one side and the Taliban and Pakistan on the other side. This mediation is called as the Doha negotiations. The recent negotiations uh, were declared as progressive and so the US representative has told that it would yield the expected results. If these negotiations are successful, then a US Taliban peace agreement is expected. Now the implication of this US Taliban peace agreement will be felt across South Asia and West Asia which means India will have to face serious troubles if Taliban comes into power in Afghanistan. It is because Taliban is indirectly controlled by Pakistan. Now, a similar situation arose in the year 1988. At that time, the Soviet-Afghan war was going on. And the Geneva Accords, which was signed in the year 1988, resulted in the end of that war. So, the Soviet troops started withdrawing from Afghanistan. Hence, after this, the Mujahideens of Afghanistan largely controlled the Afghanistan. This Mujahideen fighters who are now the Taliban were effectively controlled by Pakistan. So, once the Afghan war ended, Pakistan diverted the arms, ammunition and other resources secured for Taliban to Kashmir. This resulted in Kashmir insurgency which reached its peak in the 1990s. Now, the news article says that a US Taliban peace treaty is widely expected. So, this would further strengthen the Taliban and hence it will also strengthen Pakistan. Also, this move indicates the American disinterest in the South Asia as the American troops are withdrawing from Afghanistan and the America is going towards a US Taliban peace treaty. If it happens, Taliban will have control over Afghanistan. So, this is also one of the reasons why Indian government went one step further to keep a firm grip on Kashmir by ending the special status of Jammu and Kashmir. With this, we have come to the end of these article discussions. The displayed practice question will be discussed in the last session. The next article discussion is based on Consumer Protection Bill of 2019. The syllabus with which the discussion can be linked has been provided here for your reference. The article states that Rajya Sabha has passed the Consumer Protection Bill of 2019. The bill aims to protect the rights of consumers by establishing authorities for timely and effective administration and settlement of consumers dispute. This bill will replace the more than three decades old Consumer Protection Act of 1986. The Union Minister of Consumer Affairs, Food and uh, Public Distribution has said that the new legislation would ease the overall process of consumer grievance redressal. The new bill will provide a better mechanism to dispose consumer complaints that do in a speedy manner and it will also help in the disposal of large number of pending cases in the consumer courts across the nation. So, 
who is a consumer the bill defines a consumer as a person who buys any good or avails a service for a consideration but it does not include a person who obtains a good for resale or a good or service for commercial purpose it also covers uh, transactions through all modes including offline and online through electronic means such as tele shopping multi level marketing or direct selling so now let us see some of the selling features of this bill firstly the bill provides for six consumer rights the first right is to be protected against the marketing of goods products or services which are hazardous to life and property the second right is to be informed about the quality quantity potency or power then purity standard and price of goods products or services and this information is to protect the consumer against unfair trade practices then the next right is to be assured of access to a variety of goods products or services at competitive prices then the right to be heard and to be assured that consumers interests will receive due consideration at appropriate fora is also a consumer right under this bill it also provides for the right to seek redressal against unfair trade practice or restrictive trade practices or immoral exploitation of consumers then the final right is the right to consumer awareness now along with these consumer rights the bill also proposes for setting up of a central consumer protection authority or ccpa it will be an executive agency to provide relief to a class of consumers this is to promote protect and enforce the rights of consumers as a class this ccpa will be empowered to investigate recall refund and also to impose penalties it will regulate matters related to violation of consumer rights unfair trade practices and misleading advertisements so the ccpa would make interventions to prevent consumer loss then the ccpa can also initiate class action including the enforcement of recall of products refund of products and return of products which we saw earlier here a class action means it is a type of civil lawsuit that is brought up by a group of people who are similarly situated that is they have been harmed in a similar way then the ccpa will have power to impose a penalty of up to 10 lakh rupees and imprisonment for up to 2 years for a false or a misleading advertisement this penalty can be imposed on a manufacturer or uh, on an endorser or even on the publisher of misleading advertisements here an endorser means someone especially a well known person who appears in an advertisement saying that they use and like that particular product then additional swift executive remedies are also proposed in the bill through ccpa there are also provisions for deterrent punishment for adulteration of products also next the bill also envisages simplified dispute resolution process which also includes e filing of cases here the consumer will be able to file cases in the nearest commission under the jurisdiction of which the consumer resides then the bill also has provision for mediation mediation means the process by which a mediator mediates the consumer disputes this mediation is an alternate dispute resolution mechanism the reference or directing to mediation will be done by consumer forum that is the national consumer dispute redressal commission so remember that the national consumer disputes redressal commission is the consumer forum and the reference will be given when a scope for early settlement exists and the parties agree for it the bill has a provision for consumer mediation cells which has to be attached to the consumer forum also there can be no appeal if the settlement is obtained through mediation then for the first time the bill proposes an exclusive law dealing with product liability product liability is the responsibility of the manufacturer or product service provider or product seller to compensate for the injury or damage which is caused by a defective product or a deficiency in their services 
This product liability provision is to deter manufacturers and service providers from delivering defective products or deficient services. The product liability action will be based on manufacturing defect, design defect, deviation from manufacturing uh, specifications, then not conforming to express warranty, then uh, failing to contain adequate instruction for correct use, then when the services provided are faulty, imperfect or deficient. So, under these uh, circumstances, the product liability action can be taken. Then the bill also enables the central government to frame regulations to prevent unfair trade practices on e-commerce and direct selling with focus on protection of interest of consumers. Here, e-commerce means buying or selling of goods or services including digital products over a digital or electronic network. Then uh, direct selling means marketing, distribution and sale of goods or provision of services through a network of sellers other than through a permanent retail location. With this we have come to the end of this article discussion. Moving on to the next article discussion which is about the demands of uh, automobile sector to the Indian government to boost demands. The syllabus that can be linked to this article discussion has been given here for your reference. The Indian automobile sector or the Indian automobile industry is witnessing an unprecedented decline in sales. There is a slowdown in demands across categories with sales declining over 12 percent in the second quarter of 2019 as compared to the same quarter in 2018. Second quarter counts for the months of April, May and June. So, in order to operate normally through the difficult period of decline in sales, the automobile retailers are going for the last resort of manpower cutting. In the last three months, almost 2 lakh jobs have been cut across the automobile sector in India. Now, the representatives of the automobile industry are expected to meet the union finance minister. They will seek the help of the government to stimulate the demand as the festive season is nearby. The news article says that almost all segments of the auto industry that is two wheelers, four wheelers, commercial vehicles, tractors etc are hit by the slowdown. So, if the government takes some proactive measures then the upcoming festive season could see a good demand. So, what are the important demands of the auto industry to the government? Firstly, the auto industry demands the reduction of GST. Now, the GST is between 18 to 28 percent for the automobile sector. The industry is seeking rationalization of GST that is a reduction in GST for automobiles and its associated industries. If GST is reduced then it would bring down the final price of the vehicles. If price goes down then it will boost the demands and so sales will go up. Then secondly, the industry is also seeking the introduction of measures to improve liquidity that is improving the flow of money in the hands of the people. The liquidity flow has been reduced by recent incidents like the NBFC crisis. NBFCs are the non-banking financial companies and they are engaged in the business of advances and loans, acquisition of shares etc. The most recent example of NBFC crisis is the ILNFS crisis. Here ILNFS stands for the Infrastructure Leasing and Financial Services Limited. After this crisis, the NBFCs have dramatically reduced the lending. So, how does this affect the automobile sector? It affects the automobile sector because NBFCs till recently financed a large section of sales of vehicles in both the passenger and commercial sectors. So, the reduction in lending has resulted in less money available as loans and hence there is a less demand. This has adversely affected the auto sector. So, the industry is expecting some measures by the government which could improve liquidity and hence it will increase the sales. Thirdly, the industry is expecting some sort of import duty to discourage the import of auto components from China. It is estimated that 27 percent of total auto components are imported from China. These imports are worth over 1 billion US dollars. These imports adversely impact the less competitive Indian auto components manufacturers. So, the industry is expecting a measure like 
a minimum import duty to reduce import from China. Here minimum import duty does not mean less import duty. It means the tariff imposed by one country on import from another country. This is to increase the state revenue and to protect the domestic industries. Then the government should give importance to the Make in India initiative because the Make in India initiative gives more focus and incentives for manufacturers. Hence, the auto component manufacturers in India would be benefited. This would enable the auto components manufacturers in India to be more competitive as compared to foreign industry. And also, this would boost the GDP of the country. Further, the Indian automobile industry is going to implement BS6 norms, that is the Bharat stage pollution norms by April 1, 2020. Now, this BS6 norms have put an additional economic burden on the automobile manufacturers because they have to make additional investments to adapt to the changing norms. In addition to this, BS6 norms are expected to further increase the vehicle costs. So, if vehicle costs increase, it may further reduce the demand in the auto sector. Hence, the government should take proactive steps to encourage sales in the industry. With this, we have come to the end of this article discussion. Now, we have come to the last session for the day, that is the practice questions discussion session. Now, in this prelims question, three statements have been given and we have to choose the correct statements. The first statement states, India shares boundary with Afghanistan. This statement is correct because according to the official records of the Ministry of Home Affairs, India shares around 106 kilometers of land border with Afghanistan. Then if you look at the second statement, it states India shares its longest international boundary with Bangladesh. Now this statement is also correct. This is because India shares the longest length in terms of land boundary with Bangladesh, uh, which is around some 4096.7 kilometers. Then the second longest uh, international boundary which India shares is with China. Then comes Pakistan. But also know that the shortest uh, international boundary is, is uh, shared with Afghanistan, which we saw it is around 106 kilometers only. So, this statement is also correct. Now, if you look at the third statement, uh, it states India shares its international land boundary with seven countries. Now, this is a fact, okay, it is true. So, what are the seven countries? We just now discussed about four countries. One is Bangladesh, then is China, then Pakistan, then Afghanistan. Then apart from this, we know that India shares uh, borders with Nepal, then Myanmar, then Bhutan. So, there are seven countries. So, this statement is also correct. Now, along with this, also know that uh, India has around 15,000 106.7 kilometer of land border and uh, India has a coastline of 7516.6 kilometer. Here all the three statements are correct. Correct answer to this question is option D 1, 2 and 3. Now let us see one main question based on GS paper 2. The question is uh, discuss the various implications of the proposed reorganization of the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Now for answering this question, you can mention that the reorganization has been proposed by the Jammu and Kashmir Reorganization Bill of 2019. Then you can also mention that this bill aims to reorganize the state of Jammu and Kashmir into two parts. So if the bill becomes an act, it will modify the status of uh, the state of uh, Jammu and Kashmir to Union Territory with Legislative Assembly. But the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir will not have the existing areas of the districts of Leh and Kargil. This is because the bill is also proposing to create another Union Territory called as Union Territory of Ladakh without Legislative Assembly. This uh, Union Territory of Ladakh will have the districts of Lay and Kargil. Now, the central government will also uh, be able to bring the development to the proposed Ladakh region. This is possible because in such a system, the region will be isolated from the internal security situations 
of the Jammu and Kashmir. Then you can also say that the direct control of the territory under the central government means that the central government will be able to handle the security environment in the Kashmir region in a better way. Then thus it will be an improvement in the internal security in the Jammu and Kashmir region. This will happen then it means the central government will also be able to handle the issues of cross border terrorism effectively. Then uh, there will be effective steps against the contraband goods such as uh, fake Indian currency notes, illicit drugs and others. Then the uh, central government will be in a better place to arrest and nab the infiltrators from Pakistan. So with the reorganization the center will be able to divert the youths from the hands of the insurgents and terrorists and uh, the center can orient them towards development as already the article 370 has been made inoperative by the president. Then however the reorganization has the potential to create a zone of disaffection among this Shia Muslim population in the Kargil district if their interest are not safeguarded by the central government. Uh, this is because they have been opposing the move, move of uh, the demand for the union territory. Then you can say that the proposal may also evoke some negative sentiments among other states also. This is because the proposal for reorganization is seen as an extreme step of centralization of powers by the central government. Thus, some states feel that it is an attempt to loosen the grip of the states on federalism principle. So, with the reorganization, uh, better political will is expected to nab the culprits and to prosecute the offenders who have made the Hindus from Kashmir to flee their homeland. Then uh, you can say the reorganization at the short term will better equip the central government to assist the implementation of the sudden extension of all the provisions of the central government. And you can also add that the reorganization idea and the more central control is unpopular or it is not liked among the people in the Kashmir Valley. So unless the government promotes confidence measures along with appropriate security, the situation could be exploited by Pakistan and uh, the propagators of insurgency and terrorism can also exploit the situation. So you can mention these are the some of the implications because of the proposed reorganization of the state of Jammu and Kashmir. With this we have come to the end of today's sessions. If you like the video don't forget to like, comment and share and do subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy YouTube channel for more updates related to civil service examination preparation.